What's going on everybody? When Apple released the new MacBook Pro, one of the big changes was that they removed all the USB and Thunderbolt ports in exchange for USB-C ports. This caused a lot of controversy when it first happened. But when the dust settled, I started thinking about it and I wanted to see if I could build a USB-C setup that worked day to day for me. So that meant, could I find the external drives and storage and how those really performed compared to my previous setup? What I wanna do in this video is show you guys what I think are a few of the best external USB-C drives right now. All the drives I'm gonna show you are a little different, but what I wanna do is point out some of the positives and negatives to each drive and why one might be better for you than another one. So the goal of this video is to help you figure out which of these drives is best for your setup. So when I was looking for drives to start testing with the computer, I wanted to select a variety of different drives from different manufacturers. They also had to have one thing in common, which was that they were all bus powered. I thought it was important that all the drives were powered by USB-C and didn't require an external power adapter. I went with a G drive, a LaCie, a Samsung, and a Seagate drive. I thought this was a good representation of some of the bigger players in the market, and I thought all these drives brought something kind of unique and different to the table. The first drive I looked at was the G Drive Mobile. I believe this is an Apple Store exclusive. It has a one terabyte capacity. It's built with an aluminum case. It's a 7200 RPM drive. And I think it's just a good all around performer. So there's nothing too special about it. It matches well with the computer. The performance numbers for the drive were pretty solid. They claim 136 megabytes per second read and write, and I got really close to that on the write, and I was actually a little over it on the read. So overall, really good. The next drive I tested was the LaCie Rugged. This is a four terabyte drive that has an aluminum case. They also say that it's drop, crush, and water resistant. They have some specs that it can withstand being run over by like a one ton car. So it's supposed to be really durable, I think is the point. The performance of this drive was also really good. It's pretty much in line with the performance of the G drive. The specs list 130 megabytes per second as the read write, and I got really close to that with 125 and 125. So it's right in the ballpark. The next drive I tested was the Samsung T3 SSD. This is a solid state drive that comes in a variety of sizes from 250 gigabytes to two terabytes. It's compact, it's super lightweight, and overall, it's a great performing drive. I had this before I had my new computer, and I've always liked the drive. The performance numbers were much better than the mechanical drives. I was getting almost 400 megabytes per second writes and over that on the read, so I think it's a really solid performer. The last drive I tested is the Seagate Innovate. So the reason they call it that is because it's eight terabytes, which is insane for a bus powered drive. It's a little bit heavy at over three pounds, but it's an all aluminum enclosure and feels like it's super durable and well-made. So I was really impressed with the quality of the drive. When it came to the performance, this drive was actually the fastest of all the mechanical drives, which is kind of to be expected because of its larger size but I was getting around 160 megabytes per second on both the read and the write. So the performance is really solid. So after looking at all the drives, using it for a while and running some basic performance tests, here's the conclusions I came to. If you're looking for maximum capacity, this is definitely the drive to go with. It's eight terabytes, it's bus powered, uh, the aluminum build quality is super solid, durable. So if you want maximum capacity, this is, this is the only way to go. If you're looking for a little less capacity and a much smaller size and a lighter weight, then I would go with this. It's just all around a solid drive, so I think this is a good choice. If you want just a basic backup drive for your new laptop, you want to use Time Machine and store some files, and you don't need anything special or out of the ordinary, I think this is a great choice. It's a good value for the money, it matches the computer well, it looks cool, and it performs pretty well. So for a basic all around everyday drive, I think this is the pick. If you want to be able to edit directly off the drive and not have to move the files to your computer or you need faster storage for whatever reason, then I think this is really by far the best choice. As you saw, the performance numbers are really good for an external drive. I hope you guys learned something from this video about which of these drives or which combination of these drives is best for your setup. I'll be putting out videos every week. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.